Um, my name is Pavel. I'm responsible for big data in the Deutsche Bank foreign exchange. I will tell you about how we use ClickHouse, why do we use it, and what if we had to change in ClickHouse to be able to use that. We have been using ClickHouse pretty much since it was open sourced in, since early 2017, mainly to store our trade data, our port data, marking data, and so on and so forth. I will start with what we found good about ClickHouse and one, why we decided to use it in the first place, and then I'll show you the challenges that we had to overcome and the challenges we yet have to overcome in the future. We have a bunch of users here in the bank who are interested in the big data which we provide. The most common people are the data engineers who are usually tasked with some, something like keep our data for eternity and provide access to the data to anybody who asks for that and have the permissions. Um, so these guys have pretty straightforward needs. They need some place to lend the data, they need some place to access the data and query it sometimes. And then besides the data engineers, we also have traders and quants who are relatively technically savvy people who can query databases on their own, who can build complex mathematical models and write queries and make some something to the data they use. Uh, they have a different needs. They need to run arbitrary queries, they need to have a sandboxes to research stuff and so on and so forth. Then we also have the managers. The managers are usually interested in reports. It's something that was pre-built for them, uh, and then they, uh, they 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 use rather it to use reports. And some of the reports are so good actually that the traders, salespeople want to make them in apps. All these people are using the same data stack. We we have just a ClickHouse cluster to serve all of them, but their needs are pretty different. All these people need to access the data in a secure way, so we need to make the data access control clear and working for everybody. Why we decided to go with ClickHouse for that? In the first place, it was able to, and it's still able to handle our hundreds of terabytes of data in a fast way. In our case, that's really diverse data. It's not like we have one or two huge data sets. We have dozens of them and the data is different. And traders and clones and salespeople want to join the different data together. The learning curve for, for ClickHouse is pretty good for us. Uh, traders and clones were able to start using it just as we rolled it out. That's unlike some of the competitor products. Uh, then we then we had to actually change something in the house to make it work in our environment. In the first place, the security was really basic in the house. Uh, we need to support a diverse group of persons accessing different data uh, in 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 a way then the actual access rules are pretty complex. We needed to have field level entitlement, we needed to have role level entitlement, we needed to have the data encrypted and so on and so forth. We also had a bunch of cases with consistency when we needed to be sure that all the data is there in the house when we are making a regulatory facing report, for example. And the last but not least was the need for quant people. These are the guys who are making really sophisticated time series analysis and with plain SQL, it's really hard to them to move forward. The first and the most important challenge was the access control. In our environment, the access control is not mainly driven by the 
Robux, classical Robux systems. The reason for that is that uh, we have a lot of departments, a lot of roles intersecting one with each other and supporting the role-based access control is just too costly. So we are using attribute-based access entirely. Attribute-based access control or ABAC is actually an approach when instead of having a role for people, we are using the attributes of their position, say where they work. Here, an example, they work in FX. Uh, in what location do they work and what position, how senior they are and so on and so forth. These are all uh, written in their documents and their internal systems and we can use it to uh, craft a policies, uh, rules by which we grant or deny access to some of the systems or some of the data. Here's an example of such a policy. Say we only allow people to access the trade if they are the ones who sold the trade or the team member of somebody who sold the trade or the trade is internal. Uh, this is written here, just uh, like a document available for non-technical persons to read. So usually an application comes to a backers, executes this policy and gets the, back the decision. It's either the person can access the resource or cannot. For each and near every trade, which traders can see in their system, they run this check. We wanted to extend this to ClickHouse as well. But for ClickHouse, we could not afford to perform a check for each and every record we have in ClickHouse. So we had to do something different. Instead of checking each and every record in ClickHouse, if a Abacus allow to see that or deny to see that, we inverted the condition we had in the policies and converted them into a subqueries that we went uh, added to the queries transparently for the users. Say somebody wanted to have a sum of profit for each salesperson and then group by a salesperson, but she's only allowed to see Switzerland tra trades and only for the teams where she is a member, then our system will modify the query like here on the slide. So she won't see all the trades, but only will see what is allowed to her. Technically wise, we built a proxy. The proxy was transparent for existing ClickHouse clients for GDBC, ODBC, Python, R, and so on and so forth. But it modified the queries on the fly transparently to the users. So somebody brought a query in Tableau, it went through ODBC, then proxy modified the query, it went to ClickHouse and got the response, and the response was transparently sent to Tableau. That worked pretty well. So the system is working now and so the people, and it has some unintended benefit in itself. As you probably know, the ODBC driver uh, cannot authenticate people on the Tableau server. So we had to pretend the ClickHouse ODBC driver is actually a pair ODBC driver to get a Kerberos token from Tableau, and then to translate the SQL queries for power into click house to make this work. This is how we ensure the front to back access control for the data starting from the UI up to the click house. The second challenge was the consistency. For some of our flows, we cannot afford uh, the case when we don't know and can't prove that we have captured all the data. So we built our ingestion pipeline ourselves that's based on Kafka, but also support a number of features specific to, to, to our consistency needs. We have the manifest control. Uh, for example, when we check that all the data has passed the, the ingestion pipeline and actually landed to ClickHouse. And we also have the raw data capturing. 
uh, which is capturing also in ClickHouse, just to be able to restore the data in case we have an error in transformation or are asked by audit or something. Uh, we didn't use the built-in ClickHouse Kafka adapter just to have full control over what's happening in the ingestion and the data sources and through, uh, through the pipeline. This was what we were able to overcome so far. So our ClickHouse is working and continue to grow. And now the new challenge is facing us. Uh, the, it's, mainly, uh, it's mainly driven by the data locality and cross-border data laws, which are being put into place by different countries. So what we will need to build in the near future is the geographically distributed ClickHouse clusters with transparent queries running on them, such that every query, every result of the query can be set up to adhere to the local laws. Say if you are in, in Germany, for example, and asking the overall statistics of the trading activity, you can see the sum of the trades from Swiss, from Swiss branches, but you cannot see them individually. So the cluster has to take the location of the user and location of the data into account and transparently modify the queries or allow or disallow uh, them entirely. The second challenge we see ahead is the complex data model. Uh, for our case, we need a easy way to query and see the pro-rata above data or various binary data, which is stored in ClickHouse, mainly for history, but also for data replay. And the second, I think the most technically complex one would be to integrate a Turing complete language and not really the language, but the environment, the execution environment for quants to be able to do the time series analysis uh, like they used to do. It may be Julia, it may be Python, but anyway, we will need something which is run inside the ClickHouse and have the fast access to the data uh, inside ClickHouse uh, to support the quant needs. So ClickHouse is really making our life easier and cover most of our data needs. And as we grow and our installation grows with us, we will need even more sophisticated uh, setups for that. So that's it. Thanks.